My dad joked that he was a better uncle than a parent. And he wasn't wrong. I mean, my cousins, hell, half the neighborhood looked up to him. My dad coached five different Little League teams simultaneously, knew all of the awesome music, and was the funniest person at a family gathering. He was also terrible at remembering meaningful things about you, frequently forgot to pick me up from school, and was quite possibly a malignant narcissist. <laughs> from birth, I was expected to be a copy of my father. Why the hell else would you name your son directly after yourself? TJ stands for Tyrone Jr., which admittedly was a pretty common name for a black kid in the 1980s. <laughs> my father is the slanted shaft of sunlight you gratefully seek out on a chilly day. He's different from everything around him. He's inviting and he's welcome. You just forget how quickly you can overheat in such a concentrated light. How unpleasant that formerly welcome sensation can be. My parents had met in high school and were literally the full cliche. My mom was the shy, blonde, class salutatorian. And my dad was the actual captain of the motherfucking football team. <laughs> yes, they were an interracial Taylor Swift song. I can see how my dad fell for my mom's intelligence and compassion, and how my mom found the charismatic jock equally alluring. But by the time I was in elementary school, the family shell was cracking. My dad wouldn't come home until late at night, often with flimsy excuses, and a backhand for either my mom or his only child if we were in the way when he finally showed up. My mom and I learned to walk on eggshells with every interaction, frantically waiting for my dad's sunny smile to break through the dark clouds and staying out of reach of the constant storms. By the time I was in the first grade, I had become adept at wearing long sleeves and telling people that I'd walked into doors. And even after my parents' divorce, the day after my sixth birthday, I had to learn to dance between the raindrops of my father's mercurial rage and effortless charm. Tyrone Sr. was a relentless womanizer and a profound bully. He was also the light of every social gathering. He's the funniest and the most interesting person you have ever met. When I was eight, I watched him browbeat an acquaintance in a store until the man cried. And then he turned around and charmed the store's cashier so thoroughly that she let him leave without paying and gave him her phone number. <laughs> Growing up over breakfast, my dad would take a coffee with a healthy glug of milk and sugar only to say literally the grossest thing I have heard in my entire life, which was, I like my coffee like my son, light and sweet. <laughs> and as a kid, I trailed behind my father a miniature lighter copy, a reverse shadow. I was a pudgy kid with asthma, thick glasses, and an aversion to sports. Instilled, ironically enough, by my dad, who was a champion athlete and still remembered fondly in my hometown for his high school football prowess. My dad was so excited when he had a son because he could then teach me to relive all the sports glories that were beginning to yellow and curl over time. And unfortunately, he had a queer kid who was real funny, so. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you. So. <sighs> Elementary school aged me did not like to run preferred to make a bouquet with the clover in the outfield, <laughs> and was profoundly uninterested in the rare fly ball that zoomed uh, toward my fragile cranium. <laughs> the asthma didn't help either. I was born six weeks early, and my lungs never fully cooked. 
too much effort and I could feel the world start to slip away from me, life demanding more than I could give it. This did not deter Tyrone Sr. When I was eight, he made me do wind sprints in a Ralph's parking lot for an hour until I threw up and then I passed out from a lack of oxygen. I was doing CrossFit two decades before it was cool. <laughs> I was nine when I told my father I didn't want to come over for visitations anymore. I flinched, expecting the worst. But my father just looked at me and said, Will, I can't force you to do anything you don't want to do. Which was baffling, because that's all he had done my entire childhood. But he dropped the visits, and I only saw him on holidays. In hindsight, he'd started dating a new woman, and she didn't much care for children, and it was a pretty elegant solution for everybody involved. <laughs> Unfortunately, by the time I was in high school, I found myself unexpectedly loving weightlifting. My long dormant Tyrone jeans finally kicking the fuck in. Now, Weightlifting is fucking awesome because unlike team sports, there's not a lot of pressure to prove yourself. It's just you and the fine art of lifting heavy things, putting them down, then picking them up all over again in a methodical fashion, just like Jesus intended. <sighs> when you weightlift, you are competing with yourself to be something new and something better. And at 14, I realized I needed help from someone better at this than me. And so, to quote Erica Badu, <laughs> I had to call Tyrone. <laughs> oh, you know I was waiting to do that. <laughs> so, as I grew stronger and more confident, I began to understand this man better. We could talk about gains. We could discuss protein supplements and not have to think about our complicated history. I watched him effortlessly walk up to anyone at the gym and find something to talk about. I learned that I too could weave webs between myself and others with ease. And I saw what it was like to be my dad. The world was complicated, but his charisma wasn't. When it's easy for you, you feel entitled to people, to treat them like toys. I saw him pinpoint women's insecurities and constantly look for openings to get a phone number, a promise for another meeting, something more. He was relentless when it came to a goal in front of him, which is, of course, why my father was the ideal person to teach me how to drive. <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. My father was not my first choice, but my single parenting mom, the one who had worked tirelessly to keep me safe from danger, couldn't unclench when I was behind the wheel. <laughs> Every 30 seconds that I like jolted forward trying to internalize the rhythm between braking and accelerating, she would grab the oh shit bar with like white knuckles and yelp. <laughs> Tyrone Sr.'s approach to driving was surprisingly simple. He took me to an abandoned gravel parking lot in Long Beach, right near the ocean's edge, and made me drive in circles for what felt like 742 years. <laughs> then we had to practice parallel parking and reversing. And we did all this with a manual transmission. Yeah. That's right. Which had the added danger that if I flooded the engine and caused the car to drift, there was a non-zero percent chance that I might let the car meander right into the ocean. <laughs> I was 15 with braces, a too tight haircut that made me look like Manny from Modern Family. <laughs> and a sweaty nervousness that I had not yet learned how to turn into the breezy confidence you see in front of you today. So, at one point, my dad put his hand softly yet decisively on my shoulder as I tried to drive. That's it. Time's up. You're doing fine learning, he said with surprising kindness. 
but honestly, this is boring. Switch. My dad hopped into the driver's seat. Next, he rifled through the CD rack, attached to the driver's side sun visor. It's 1998. Popped in a disc and the opening notes of Seal's Kiss from a Rose <laughs> started blaring at the highest possible volume. Tyrone Sr. eased the car into a steady pace, then began to pump the brakes in time to the song's drums. He slid into a casual posture, leaning back in the seat, one arm slung out the window, the other lightly on the wheel, and looked over as he goofily locked eyes on me just in time to sing, Baby, I compare you to a kiss from a rose on the gray. Ooh. <laughs> Driving is fun, he yelled with the shittiest grin, just in time to, ba da 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 -da. alongside with Seal. <laughs> TJ, life is too short to feel like something is another chore. Remember that. <laughs> All right, it's been 25 years, and I have not forgotten that. <laughs> also, Kiss from a Rose is a motherfucking bop, and I will not hear anything from any of you. <laughs> 10 years later, I flew back to LA while in the middle of my PhD program and I found Tyrone Sr. in a particularly vicious mood. We met up at a restaurant for a quick meal, and after flirting with the waitress, my dad immediately started to complain that I was spending too much time studying and should work on getting back in actual shape. I rolled my eyes, and I told him I could lift just fine. I'd never needed his opinion on my education. My dad had dropped out of college his senior year. At that moment, the waitress came back and asked if we wanted coffee. <sighs> With practiced ease, my father said, I'll take it light and sweet, just like my son. I smiled tightly at the waitress as she laughed, as they always do. And I said, I guess I'll take it black and bitter then, just to keep up. as the waitress quickly fled the now very awkward exchange. <laughs> My dad glared at me. <laughs> Fair. His eyes narrowed, and my dad growled in a low voice that I wasn't too old for him to punch again. I blinked for a second, and then it all fell into place. The endless charm, and the cleverness, the sulky bitterness, the outright sociopathy behind a smile. I was tired. I held a hand up in warning. Tyrone, I'm 25. I'm stronger than you. None of this shit is cute anymore. We're fucking done. I slapped a 20 on the table, pushed away from an uncharacteristically speechless Tyrone Sr and in one motion, politely took the steaming mug from the approaching waitress before walking out the door. We haven't spoken since. Now, I returned the coffee cup the next day, I'll have you know. It's, it's important, I had to go. But more importantly, I learned that closing the door on someone that feels entitled to control over you is the right move no matter what they've given you. Because after all, life is too short to feel like something is another chore. Give it up for TJ Talley.